stand together. Ephesians chapter 1 tells us, and Paul's encouraging them, he says, this is what you have, the hope and the calling and the riches of the glory of Christ and his inheritance with the saints because of what Christ has done on our behalf. Therefore, having been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Hope, peace, faith, strength, all these things that he gives us. When peace like a river attends.
welcome First North family. Thank you for worshiping with us today. We're excited to share some upcoming opportunities with you. Join us next Sunday for First North Together, a special combined service at 1030 a.m. featuring evangelist Dr. Steve Pettit. Steve is the former president of Bob Jones University, and he serves as the current president of the Palmetto Family Council, promoting Christian values in South Carolina. Our Kids Own Kids will join the main service for family worship with music led by Steve's bluegrass band alongside our choir and orchestra. We will have Zoom Zone and child care for the younger kiddos. Bible Fellowship classes will meet at 9.30 a.m. Then join us that evening at 6 p.m. for a special concert in time of worship led by Dr. Pettit and his band. Invite your friends and neighbors for an unforgettable night of music and prayer. We are super excited to host Fall at First on Wednesday, October 30th from 5.30 to 8 p.m. in the church parking lot. This family-friendly event will have inflatables, games, food vendors, and trunk or treat. Admission is free and it's open to the entire community. Invite your friends for an evening of fun as we come together to serve our neighbors after the challenges caused by the hurricane. We have candy collection stations located throughout the campus. Please drop off bags of individually wrapped fun-sized treats for the kids. We also need volunteers for parking and to provide trunks for the trunk or treat. It's a great way to give back and be a blessing to our community. If you would like to serve, sign up at firstnorth.org slash fall. Christmas rehearsals are in full swing. We are meeting Wednesdays at 6 p.m. in the worship center and in the choir room. We still have spots available in the choir, shepherds, and in the king's entourage. We welcome anyone ages 13 and up. Students will make it in time for Revive. We are continuing our efforts to provide much needed relief to those impacted by Hurricane Helene. Partnering with Samaritan's Purse, we are sending weekly teams to serve in Western North Carolina. If you'd like to join, simply visit firstnorth.org slash relief and use the links there to register with Samaritan's Purse and reserve your spots on the minibus. Seats are limited to the first 14 people who sign up and the team departs early in the morning and returns that evening. You can also donate to our relief efforts through our regular giving channels. Be sure to designate your gift as disaster relief. Let's come together and serve those in need. You can find more information about all of these opportunities as well as additional information about our church family on our website at firstnorth.org. Maddie makes me tired. <laughs> well, listen, uh, we're, we're filled uh, really um, overwhelmed with really a lot of great opportunities uh, in our community and, and some filling a lot of great needs, uh, touching a lot of people. I, I, th I thought I, ca I really can't, I, I really can't, um, I, I haven't really decided yet, okay? I, have, I haven't decided yet that um, uh, this morning and our worship was, was, um, was so special. And I, I liked for two reasons. One is that, um, man, let's go ahead and uh, take on. We sing, we sing songs that have to do with the river this morning. I'm telling you, that's courageous right there, okay? Everybody hates rivers and they hate the overflow. Hey, man, nobody wants that. I mean, this is the, the curse of the world. And yet... And yet, it's a great time for us to realize and remember. And I want you to remember, we have a responsibility. If you're sitting here this morning, you have a responsibility. You are a part of a, a, a I don't know how small it is, but, a, but it's a, a proportion, a small proportion of people that truly understand what's happening here, what's taking place. We have a lot of people that are that are that are struggling right now, and you know there are a lot of folks up there, and 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 they would they would worship with us now. But if if they weren't Christians, uh, boy, you know, just just it's it's hard for them to to hear about the 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 the, the flowing of of the of the grace of God and all that is happening there. Um, uh, it. There's, there was one uh, verse or one phrase in here. Let this blessed assurance 
control. And I wrote that, I wrote that down because that's what we need to be doing. They're not going to know that unless we show them and unless we tell them. And you have an opportunity to do that every day. You're talking to someone every day that is either connected to the tragedy, perhaps they have a tragedy in their own life that has nothing to do with a hurricane, nothing to do with a flood, nothing to do with damage. It's just intensified the challenge that they have in their life. You have that responsibility to share with them the hope that can only be found in Jesus Christ. I mean, you're the one that's there. You're the one that can give that word of encouragement. You're that one that can give that word of caring. None of the rest of us could do that because we're not there. We're not there, but you are. And we have a chance to make a difference. It is, it is true that no matter what we are in, no matter what we're involved in, we can truly say it is well with our soul, that we trust God in this, that we lift him up and say, Lord, we want to, we want to honor you and we want to respond to you because we're literally overwhelmed at the moment. And to tell you the truth, you know, I, I look at these days as days of opportunity. Um, and, and I uh, said to uh, some of our folks recently that all the things that we're doing now, they really are. They really are all connected. I think it's that uh, uh, Steve's coming next week. Uh, our time together next week is of God. It is the it is the right time for a number of reasons. It's the right time because when we come together, uh, we, we come together as a group who pray and try to make a difference in terms of those that have experienced tragedy. And they've experienced loss. And they are, they are struggling with that. And everywhere we go, I had uh, three conversations uh, yesterday outside our area and uh, that has happened to be in another part of the country that just really have no understanding really of what's happening here. As I explained that to, to them and talked to them about that, they were just overwhelmed at some of the things that are taking place. Well, we have the opportunity to make a difference. At the same time, we have the opportunity to declare the gospel. Uh, we're going to see, we're going to see in the next couple of weeks, and this is, not, this is not by any stretch a political statement. I'm just saying it, we're going to see great turmoil. It's going to ratchet up more than we have seen it before. They're going to do anything and everything in this time. I'm not sure what it has to do with our country. I'm not sure what it has to do with certain policies. It's just the the, the, the way that we are now, there is an, uh, uh, an, an attack upon uh, our, way of, uh, our way of life. And so we need, to, we need to put our minds, and we certainly need to be involved in the process. All of us need to vote. But at the same time, we need to step outside that and make sure that our concentration, our focus is in the, on the Lord God Almighty that we are here to serve, that whatever happens here, we're here to serve the Lord Jesus Christ and share the gospel, the good news, because we live in a time, as we have seen this week, where there is great, great division, even attack upon the things of God. And there is a, uh, an attack, there is a, a, a rebellion that is there. And so we have an opportunity. We look around, folks. We have the opportunity here to make a difference. And, uh, and I, I believe that uh, next week is going to be a great time to life our church. It's a wonderful time for you to invite somebody. They're going to hear the same gospel, but in a little bit of a, a different way. Invite your friends, your neighbors. Um, I'm going to be with you in Bible Fellowship at 930, and then our worship service at 1030 when we're all uh, together for our kids, for, for everything that is there. It's going to be a wonderful day. And then I'll tell you, I think Sunday night is very important. As we have a time of praise, 
but as we have a time of prayer for our country. Uh, we have a place where they're just now, uh, that they are, we are neglecting that, and we need to come together as a people of God and pray, and uh, uh, it is not by any stretch of political meaning, but we need to pray for our country, and we need to pray for our leaders, and we need to pray for us. We need to look in the mirror and say, God, how can I do that? There are just a lot of special things there. Um, and, and you know what? God gives us an opportunity. We had uh, another group in North Carolina uh, uh, yesterday. I haven't had a chance to talk to them yet, but I'll tell you what, North Carolina is a better place because our folks were there. And we'll be going this week. There's information, as Maddie said, there's information in your bulletin um, that, that you can be a part of that. Um, I'd like you to pray and that we're working in some efforts of bringing some other churches along because people are key. Also, we're talking with people constantly what the needs are. One of the things you hear is the needs are everywhere, and they, and they are, and they are there. There's no doubt about that. But uh, the, uh, I, I talked with someone, and in fact, one of the best things that happened to me yesterday was I talked to a, to a friend in Atlanta who put me on a real key um, uh, resource in Asheville uh, that we can uh, partner with in that. And so trying to, to see what they need um, most and what can be done in the entire part of, uh, of that state. That's what we want to try to do, and that's what we're going to seek to do in the days to come. So the way that you give, we've had people continue to do that to this effort. The way that you go, the way that you serve, the way that you pray, uh, the way you speak to other people. I'm telling you, folks, it makes a difference. It makes a difference when we give folks a sense of hope rather than just, well, let me tell you another bad story. Uh, there are plenty of those out there, but they need to hear that, as we've already sang about that this morning, as we understand that, that God is in control of this, that the Lord can bring something out of this. We don't understand it. We don't, we don't know why that's the case, but the Lord can bring something out. Uh, can bring something out of that today. Today, I want you to turn with me your, in your Bibles to uh, uh, Matthew chapter 13. Uh, we are continuing our study in the parables. You know, this, this is really important because when Jesus taught in the parables, he taught in a way so that people could understand it. They didn't have a text to follow. They didn't have a video to watch. They didn't have a, a book that they could go get at the bookstore. And they could go back and look it up again. He painted, he painted truth as a picture for them, for them to see it. So that they could hear it one time, and they could take it and share it with someone else. That's what we see in the parables. We sometimes take that for granted because some of us have heard them so many times, we take it for granted. But when you take, and we're going to look uh, this morning really at three verses um, Matthew chapter 13, 44 to 46. And as we look at those three verses, just three verses, we're going forth with the truth. Now, there are two things here that are extremely uh, important. Let me, uh, let me just, first of all, read the text, and it won't take very long. And we're looking at two parables here. The first is the parable of the hidden treasure. And it says in verse 44, the kingdom of heaven is like uh, uh, like treasure hidden in a field, which a man found and covered up. And then in his joy, he goes and sells all that he has and buys that field so that he has the treasure. This is important. They didn't have banks. Okay? They didn't have banks. They didn't have safety deposit boxes. They, they didn't have a place they could put that, they would have to hide it somewhere. Many times they would not leave their values, valuables, in their home or where they live because it was so easy for someone to take it. And so here we see of a man who literally, literally has struck gold. He has struck gold in that. And he finds it, 
And he does everything he can to go and to recover and to curve that on that because it is a precious, precious treasure. The next verse is the parable of the pearl of great value. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant in search of the pearl, of fine pearls. Who, on finding one pearl of great value, went and sold all that he had and bought it. The pearl is a wonderful picture because a pearl is the result of a of kind of like an, an, an infection. Something's wrong. It's a little piece of sand gets in the oyster and it starts the, the, the pearl starts to put coats around that. And what happens is there was a beautiful pearl that came the rest of the, So something that started out as an irritation. You need to remember that. There are many things that start out as an irritation in our life. It could be a relationship. It could be a, it could be a job. It could be an uh, an encounter with someone else. It could be a conversation. And it starts out as an irritation. Man, I wish I didn't have to do this. I wish I didn't have to have this conversation. I wish I didn't know this person. I wish I didn't have to go there. And all of a sudden, God develops it in your life and my life, and it becomes that pearl that is priceless. Boy, I never would have had that had I not met him or her. I never would have had that experience. I wouldn't have known the Lord, maybe, if I hadn't known that person and they shared Christ with me. So many things come out of things that we do not understand. We could never see that happening. We could just never, ever see it and God use it. Now, two things before we get started here, and even before we pray, I want to mention two things to you. Many times the parables have multiple meanings where we can take that and understand it. And here, what is, what is the great treasure? Well, there are two possibilities. One possibility, it is simply the kingdom of God it is a relationship with the Lord. That the man stumbles and he finds, he finds the ability to have a relationship with the living God. The kingdom of God. That we don't look at circumstances the way everyone else does. We look at him. That's one interpretation of the treasure. It is the same interpretation of the pearl. That you find that and you, but the kingdom of God becomes a part of your life. And when the kingdom becomes a part of your life, the kingdom becomes a part, everything changes. Your whole value system is different. We should look differently. When you leave this place today after Bible Fellowship and you pull out into Asheville Highway or Springfield Road and there are other cars there around you, your attitude should be different. There are a lot of folks out there that are just trying to survive. They're just trying to get to the next place. They're just trying to make it to the next day. And they're going to pull up beside you in another car who knows the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. You're in the same type of automobile, maybe. You, it's re relatively the same thing. But your life is extremely different because you have that treasure in your life. We need to live. We need to talk. We need to act as if we have that treasure. So that's the first interpretation. The second is this, and even probably more important. There are many commentators that say the treasure, the treasure is you. The treasure is me. That's the treasure that God is seeking us. And so that we are, we are the treasure. We are special to him. That the, the picture here in the, in the first verse is a picture of the man who goes and, and, and finds the treasure. And that's you. God is seeking to know you. The Lord wants to do something with your life. Every single one of you. Those of you that have been here for years and years and years. And those of you that are here for the very first time. The Lord looks at you in exactly the same way. And he says, I, oh, what a precious person he is. He's a man. He's a woman that I have made. And God wants to do something with you. And you are filled with potential and opportunity. And you can make a difference you're not just surviving. You're just not taking it one step at a time. You're made, as we're going to see again in the moment, the image of God. Made in His image. 
And so therefore we can do something special for him. In the same way, in the, in the next wor- verse in chapter 13, that we are that pearl of great price who goes and, and finds that value and went and sold all that he had. You realize in both cases, that's what the Lord did for us. You are so special to him. You are so special to him that the Lord sent his only son to die on the cross for your sin. He didn't just take your side. He didn't just make an excuse for you. He didn't just put a Band-Aid on it. He sent his son to live a sinless life and die on the cross. Why would he do that? Because you are worth so much to him. There are many of you in here today, you don't believe that. There are those who are listening today online, you don't believe that. You don't believe that because you spend your time measuring your life against everyone else. I look here and I see people I say that we're in these, these places. How does this happen? Why does that happen to me? We're living in that environment right now because we hear about it every single day. Those who have, their home has been damaged, their life has been changed. Perhaps a loved one has been lost. If you were to say to them, well, you know, what is it in your life that, that would be most valuable to you? They couldn't tell you and they wouldn't care because most of it's gone. And they have gone through a difficult time. We look at those things and we say it is, it is hard. We look at the world in which we live. We live in a nation that is extremely divided. We live in a world that is in turmoil and there are things happening internationally and in every direction. We look at the the storms around us and then we just look at life. It didn't go my way. That's not what I thought the boss was going to say. That's not what I thought or I planned to happen with my child or with my marriage. That's not what I plan to do with my time. I didn't think it was going to cost that much. We go over and over and over that again. But understand, you are a treasure no matter what your circumstance. And God values you and has sent his son to die on the cross for your sin. And so when we look at all these things that we're talking about today, they're tools that God gives us to use, and we're to be active in that. Every one of you should be looking for a way to do that. And there's no place, there is no place in our life where that's unimportant. None. They're, it's, they're all, all extremely important because we never know what God is going to use. It may be, it may be that someone uses, when, when we have volunteers that go to North Carolina, that is a moment in the mind of God. It could be that when we pray next, next week on Sunday evening or when, that, when the gospel is preached on Sunday morning, when we're in Bible fellowship this morning, that the God uses a moment in our lives to draw us to himself. And it becomes a special moment. You never know what God is going to use. So looking at that from that perspective, let's just ask the Lord to really touch us in this place this moment lord as we come before you today thank you for the worship we have already experienced thank you lord that that when we talk about overflowing in 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 the time in which we live with neighbors that are not too far away from us who've experienced such tragedy in the floods and the rivers and the rains and and the wind and all that's there lord help us to see that there are always possibilities with you. God, we pray that you would turn our perspective. Right now, just turn our perspective. Lord, I pray you do what only you can do, that you will take us, dear God, in Jesus' name, take us, take hold of us, and turn us in the direction that you'd have us to go because we have a relationship with you through Jesus Christ and only because 
we have a relationship with Jesus Christ. We pray you'd speak to us now as we look at these two verses, but filled with a world of truth. For we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. I mentioned to you before that in the teaching of Jesus, and I put in your outline the parables, that we find so many ways that we can be a part of the kingdom. Right now, it is tough for us in the world in which we live. It's tough financially. It's tough politically. It's tough uh, socially. Um, it is tough in terms of content, uh, conduct, in terms of philosophy. There's so many tragic things that are taking place in the world in which we live that do not, do not make sense to us, especially as followers of Christ, because we live in a world that is busy seeking to reject everything that is in this book, that they would throw that away. They would throw that away because they are not concerned about the things of God. That, 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 is, a, that is a tragedy for us, and it is a, it is a hard thing uh, for us. We live in a society that is, that is so mixed up. But I want you to look at some things that we have because of the kingdom. All these are true. These are not good ideas. These are not possibilities. These are truths that are available to you and to me. The first one is this, is that we see as a treasure that belongs to God. When we're obedient to Him, we are in, in a fallen world but we have a glorious opportunity when we live for Him. We've got hope for the future. We've got possibilities because we serve the King of kings and Lord of lords. You've got to take that out of the idea of verbiage and put it into a tenet of your life. This is part of the truth. This is what we live in. That no matter what has happened, there are some there are some tragedies. I will tell you, uh, last night I, I sat there and it was, it was later in the evening. I was going over and through a series of circumstances, a situation came to my mind about that. And all of a sudden, I'll just tell you, I got, I got very discouraged. And I was trying to help somebody and they're, they're not in our, in our church. And I hadn't talked to them in a couple of weeks. But somehow something I was reading made me think about that and said, what in the world? There just seems to be no hope here. What can happen here? A, a, a marriage that is being destroyed at a critical, critical time. And I thought to myself, what in the world can be done? And I'll tell you, it was kind of a, it was a bleak moment. Just for a moment, it was a bleak moment, and it was as I was looking over this passage of Scripture. And I'm, and I'm thinking, I'm praying, God, what is it that you'd have me to do? What is it that you would have me to say? Is it a phone call that I make? Is it a meeting that I have? Is it something? I don't have the answer, but just tell them again what Jesus says. In a fallen world, we have lots of opportunities. You are not completely out of the, the ball game there. But we also have to realize that because we are that treasure, because we are talking about the kingdom of God, secondly, we cannot have a relationship with the Lord on the basis of our own efforts. It is more than religion. It is a personal walk with Jesus Christ. There are all types of religions out there, and there are all types of beliefs that are out there, but what we must have is understand we cannot do that ourselves. We cannot build ourselves up. We have to be rightly related to Him. When we, in this sense, we are the treasure that God's seeking, and the kingdom is the treasure that we receive. We get to be a part of something that is truly special. We're not out of the game. It is not over. It is not hopeless. But it cannot be done as a part of our efforts. 
We can't do this alone. It, it cannot happen, and it just doesn't work. And when God is seeking us, because you're a treasure, listen, the Lord is coming after you. And when he comes after you, he comes after you in every way. What we see here is that, thirdly, is that we don't just happen to find a relationship with the Lord. You've not just been lucky, all right? You've not, you didn't just stumble on it. God had a plan for you. The Lord put somebody in front of you, or in some cases, put you in front of somebody else for you to make a difference. And the Lord sets that up. Life is about divine appointments. That the Lord puts you there for that moment. I, I recognize that. And sometimes I, I, I speak with people and I say, you know what? The, the, the Lord brought you here in this moment just for me. Just to say that. Just to do that. To be that encouraging. It doesn't just happen. God has a plan. Hey, listen. In both of these parables... In both of these parables, that hidden in the field, that the man is out there and he has a purpose and he finds that treasure and then he goes and he buys that field. He is on a purpose from God. At the same time, the one who, the merchant, he's in search. He is searching for that pearl. He is searching for something that is special. Look for that opportunity. Look for what God has for you, and the Lord does something special in that way. There are many ways, because this leads us, there are many ways that we might discover the wonder of salvation that is available only through Jesus Christ. Not, not discover foundation in a human sense. The answer to our issues it's not just to have a particular person elected. The answer to our issue is not to, just to have uh, recovery from tragedy. The answer to our issue is not that there might be peace somewhere else in the world. The answer to the issues that we face is found in Jesus Christ. And many times it comes, uh, we discover that through Jesus Christ. And it can come in a lot of ways. Sometimes we just recognize the power of the grace of God. We just say, it's just, just God. God just put that person, God. God just gave me that. God gave me that opportunity. It had to be him, the grace of God. He loves you so much. He seeks after you. And you need to wake up. You need to wake up, and you need to pay attention to that. That sometimes it comes just by recognizing the grace of God. Sometimes we are drawn through our circumstances, and those are good and bad. Sometimes we are given an opportunity that the Lord just throws on us through our circumstances, somebody we meet, someplace we go, something we do, and God gives to us that opportunity. At other times, God uses a crisis in our life. It's our circumstances. It's, it's the way that we live. Is that God gives us a chance. Sometimes through tragedy. Sometimes it's through the loss of, a, of, a, of, of someone we love very much. Sometimes it's through, in a moment, it seems... A moment of great defeat. Boy, how many times have you said, I just don't see how it can get any worse. I'll tell you, this is just about as bad as it gets. As soon as we say that, when you look, the Lord shows up. Now, we need to trust him because in some of these things, there's no fun there. It's not exciting. There's, there's nobody here who's saying, boy, I tell you what, I wish I had, had more damage at my house. Nobody's saying that. Nobody's saying, but, but God uses what we have been through our circumstances. And we discover through all of this, this is so important. 
we discover what other people do not know. He is the only way. It's not another job. It's not another person. It's not someone else doing right. It is being rightly related to the Lord Jesus Christ. We are dependent on him. I'm telling you now, listen, to a lot of the world in which we live, we walk out of this and say this, we might as well be speaking Swahili. They don't know. They don't know. They don't see it. They don't understand it. What we have to do is incorporate it into our lives. You have to put it in there, and then we have to, we have to flesh it out. That's what, that's what we, had to, we had to do. I talked with somebody who had had a, uh, a, surgery, uh, a surgery recently, and, and uh, they had to go, go through a lot of therapy. And nobody likes to go through therapy. They don't like to do this over and over and and, and you don't understand why this is happening and why this is, how, why this is taking place. And, and I had not talked with, to this friend of mine in another part of the country in several months. And he said, man, it, it's back. He said, man, I'm, I'm finally back. And I said, man, the last time I talked to you, I said, you didn't have anything but complaints. And, he, and rightfully so, because I knew, I know this guy. He's, he's a tough dude. And he was hurting all the time. But I'll tell you what, he did what he had to do. He did what he was told to do. And the result was, he said, man, the Lord has taught me such. Not only is my knee better, but he said, man, the Lord has taught me a new dependence on him. I just didn't see it before. It's all related uh, to him. And we see that. And then we, we realize that he is the only way and that it's when he's the only way, fifthly, we realize that we have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. He's looking at us. He's not just saying we are one of a hundred or a thousand or a million. We are an individual to him. And the Lord looks at you and he looks at me and he sees all of the weaknesses and there are so many in my life. And he works in spite of those and he helps me to work through those, but it's through a personal relationship with him. This is what usually I'm going to do. And so God has to take that and turn that around, that you have a personal. I mean, God is interested in you. Folks, I, I, I wish I could, could help people understand, and, and I wish I could understand what I know to be true in this. Is that Lord, the Lord being omnipotent and omniscient, he and uh, omnipresent, he is there all the time. He is focused on you right now. I don't know how this works, but I'm telling you, as an omniscient, omnipresent God, it is like there are several hundred worship services going on here, and every one of them is different because you're the only one in the audience and you're the only one that he is focusing on. And he is fully, totally, and completely focused upon you. We will never understand that for a moment in our lives. We can only trust him. and Say, God, you showed me this. I see this. I see this is what's got to be done. And it's a mixture of, Lord, I see my own sin. I see the ability that you've given me. I see the grace of God. I see the weakness of my character. And, Lord, you put all that together and you use it. It's about a personal relationship with him. It says in Ephesians chapter 5, and this is in your outline, Therefore, be imitators of God as beloved children and walk in love just as Christ loved you and gave himself for us, an offering and a sacrifice to God. When we realize, and last, when we realize that we are the treasure for whom Christ died, we will focus on making a difference for him. That's what all this stuff is about. All this stuff about, Lord, how can you use me to make a difference? Uh, yesterday morning, I uh, came up and had prayer with the group that was leaving to go to North Carolina, and uh, and 
And I, and I told them, I said, listen, I appreciate you doing this. I said, you don't realize how much you're helping me. You never know what, what God's doing. I said, not only are you going to help them, not only are you an example to someone else, but then you give me something else to talk with. And I talked with several people yesterday about the, the teams that we're sending, and I was able to encourage others to do the same thing. I couldn't do that without them. God put that in my life. I'm grateful for that when we see that, that the Lord, we are his treasure from Christ, God, will focus on making a difference. And the Lord, listen, listen, the Lord multiplies your efforts. He takes what you would normally have and he grows it up. He expands it. He grows it. He, he uh, expands it in every way that he possibly can. And God does something that we never thought that we could do. And what we've got to do is, we've got to do is, I read recently as a, in a, a uh, great theologian said this, that, that we're bowing before God, and we're bowing in, in three ways. We're bowing before Him in three ways all the time. We bow, first of all, as creatures made in the image of God. We realize He's God. We realize that he, I'm not, and Lord, that I belong to You. So we, we bow to Him as creatures of God. We also bow to Him morally. Because we are all sinners, every one of us. We are sinners in this world. And what we deserve is death and hell. We deserve the judgment of God. And what we have to have is mercy. And God gives that to us through Jesus Christ. So when we bow before him and say, Lord, I'm a sinner, God does something with our life. So we understand that he's God and we're not. We understand that we are sinners and that he has taken care of that and then we are ready to go because then we bow before him in the knowledge that we get from his word we know what we should do we know what we should say we know how we should handle that because we look at God's word we live in a society that has totally rejected God's word totally rejected God's word we see it every single day. We must bow before him. And it helps us to understand the world. And then it helps us to understand our own existence. Only through Jesus Christ. You are a treasure. You are something special. There's never been one like you before. There'll never be one like you again, ever. And God wants to do something with you and in you. Because you are a treasure. And the Lord looks and says, I can do something with him. I can do something with her that's never been done before. If he just keeps our attention. We're never too old. We're never too limited. We have all the resources that he needs for us to have. We have all the ability he needs for us to have. When we acknowledge him, what we need to say is, I want to go from this place and make a difference. <coughs> it's the only time in your life. It's the only time in your life. You, can't, you wouldn't go out of here and, and, and say this to anybody. You would, you would walk out of there, out of here and say, you know what? You know what my pastor told me this morning? My pastor told me I was a treasure. I've been thinking that all this time. Nobody's going to go out and do that. But I tell you, you need to walk out of here believing God's word. Because through Jesus Christ, that's exactly what we are. And it's not how great we are. It's about what he can use and how he can be honored. When we're obedient to him. Let's pray. Father, as we come before you today, this is a big step for us. It's a long step for us to say that we're a treasure. But Lord, one of the things that took for that to happen, there has to be a humbling of ourselves before you. We need to come before you. God, there are lots of people here with plenty of opportunity here, but we've not taken hold of that yet. 
because we've never surrendered to you. I pray for those that need to know you as Savior and Lord. I pray for those who need to take you seriously. Take you seriously. And they have given their heart and life to you and say, Lord, what would you have me to do? Lord, I pray that you'd lead and guide and direct us. Lord, it's, it's not just, we'd be happier and we'd like it better and we'd feel more fulfilled. But what's at stake here is what's around us. Other people, other places, other things. So many people that have that need. We need to be that message today. We pray that you'd find us faithful in that today. For we ask it in Jesus' name. One of the ways that you respond to this is you come to him just as you are. You don't make a deal with God. The treasure didn't change itself. You come to him just as you are. And that's what we're going to sing in just a moment. Come just as you are. Let me tell you something. I'm telling you, you have the opportunity right now. Right now you have the opportunity with someone that you've never had before. But you're going to have to start with a relationship with the Lord. You're going you're to have to start with the relationship. I'm going to tell you something. I had the, the, the relationship that I mentioned to you before. I had another relationship this week, and I realized, you know what? In every part of this, I've known this person for a long time. And um, my first thought to that was, you know what? I'm, then this is my thought. I need to wear him out. Boy, that's what I need to do. I know this guy. I need to wear him out. He won't forget this next conversation we have. And God took me to his word in this and, it, and said, you know, I need to be somebody that loves him. That just hadn't, that hadn't crossed my mind. I thought I was supposed to wear him out. And he said, that's what you've got to do. That's going to be a big thing for me. That's a hard thing for me in this particular situation. Because he has been really stupid about some things, but I need to love him. And I need to care about him. Lift him up. That's where God takes each and every one of us. Would you do that today? Perhaps you give your heart and life to Christ. Perhaps you need a church home, a place to worship and serve. Become a part of this church. A part of all these things that we're doing here. Perhaps the Lord's given you, you know what that opportunity is for you. And God wants to use it. Would you do that now? As we stand and as we sing together, would you come right now? Come just as you are. Hear the Spirit call. Come just as you are. Come and see. Come receive. One of the verses in that song says, talks about strength for the, for the day. And that's what you need. There's something that you need, God's strength to do that. But 
but you're going to have to get serious about that. It can't be just another day or a good idea. There's got to be, Lord, I'm not going to be stopped. You've given me this opportunity. I'm going to do it. It's in prayer. It's in giving. It's in witnessing. It's in serving. It's in forgiving. It's doing any and all of these things to say that we're going to make a difference. Because you, you folks are a treasure. You're a treasure for whom God sent his son to make a difference. Let's pray before we go to Bible study. Father, we pray that we'll take this, the truth of your word, and we'll apply it. We'll apply it to people around us that are in tragedy, attitudes that we have of, of anger or selfishness, personal relationships, uh, sins that we need to deal with, people that you put in our path to share with an opportunity. God, we pray for our services next Sunday. We pray for the festival that's coming up. We pray for those that we served yesterday in North Carolina and those that will serve this week. We pray, Lord, you just continue to give to us those opportunities and may we be found faithful and we'll give you the honor and the glory. Bless this hour as we open your word. Show us something we've never seen before. God, you can do that. We pray in Jesus' name, amen. God bless you and have a great day.